What's happening? My name is Jose Gutierrez Jr., a.k.a. DJ Lover J. I'm right here on the beautiful campus of Evergreen State College in the city of Olympia, the O. I'm here because I started my radio career here in 1989. I was 12 years old, and I had left for a period of time, gone to school, done several things with my life that I'm going to share with you. And today, I'm back here continuing the production and hosting of my radio show. So why don't you come along with me? We're going to go right over here to the cab, Chaos 89.3 FM, birthplace of my music, radio, media career. Come on. Okay, let's roll. Welcome to Chaos 89.3 FM, you saw the sign. And we're going to go into the studio now, go into the library, show you what this beautiful station is all about, where I was inspired to get involved with media, and talk about people, legends like Nancy G, John Ford, other people who are influences for me working at Chaos. So let's go in. I'm just like, Okay, we still running? So here's Chaos's lobby, and this is where the business happens. A lot of the paperwork, fundraising, important things that keep the station moving. So we're heading back towards the library. You can see all kind of music. The beautiful thing about Chaos is we don't just play one type of music. We don't just push commercial music. We play music that you're not going to hear on other stations. And that's definitely the foundation of my show, Live from My Five. Okay. We have more music, new age, jazz, our studio. This is my buddy Luke. He's got a dope show. What's up, Luke? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Good. Friendly people here at Chaos. I didn't even ask him if he wanted to be on, but, you know, he just went with it, so. Back here, you get to the music department and our vinyl libraries. Yeah. A whole lot of things. Like fashion and music, jazz music, classic music, hip-hop music. And that's what I'm working with. And we have our hip-hop library right here. It's a little dark back here, but it keeps things intimate. So you have, we have everything third base, classic Ice-T and W.A.'s first albums, uh, Mac Dre. You know, a lot of this stuff was brought in by a DJ named Nancy G, and she was a real inspiration to me. Nancy G is a female DJ, one of the West Coast's first DJs, one of radio's first hip-hop DJs, female DJs. And uh, she just had a beautiful voice. She was totally knowledgeable about hip-hop, and she incorporated the real essence and the foundation and the principles of hip-hop with the music because hip-hop is not one-dimensional at all. It really encompasses everything. You talk about sex, you talk about um, positive community upliftment, you know, cultural power, um, knowledge, uh, competition, you know, all of these different elements. So it really takes a real hip hopologist to be able to grasp all these things and appreciate them without judging them and appreciate them for what they're for. You know, what Africa Bambata um, stood for, what Grandmaster Flash stands for, what, you know, all of these legends and people who set the foundation stand for and so that's what I stand for that's what Nancy G stood for and you know other people who honor hip-hop in the totality of what it is that's what we stand for so all right now this is a classic album this single here is from brand Nubian New York 5% nation representatives and it's called punks jump up to get beat down now what that means what they're talking about is you got people who run their mouth a lot talking a whole bunch of this and that yin yang and uh, it's like, you know, well, is that what you really want to do? Do you really want to be a punk? Do you really want to approach me? Punks jump up to get beat down, you know, and that's, that's the real deal. Then, I'm going to flip it like this. We have some of the first dope white rappers, third base. And, you know, recently, MC Search hosted the White Rapper Show, which is a cool show. I enjoyed that. MC Search is dope. These guys follow in the lines of the Beastie Boys and really providing a platform for uh, artists who are not of color to get on the mic, for white rappers to get on the mic. And the reason why it worked, the reason why it wasn't some artificial vanilla ice, and no disrespect to him, because I like him too, but he was a, a pawn of commercial um, and corporate uh, interests. These brothers are not. Third Base came from Def Jam Records like the Beastie Boys, and they had to be respected for what they were, and they spit knowledge on the mic. Real MCs. Check it out. This is what we rock with on Live From My Five. We don't play around. Okay, 
We're here in Chaos, the newsroom, right now. And this is where some uh, pre-production, post-production news and information goes down right here. And as you see, there's a glass window right to the live on-air room where I'll be in just a moment hosting my show live for my five since 1989, um, inspired by, you know, Chaos and playing hip-hop when a lot of other stations would not. And really playing hip-hop, breaking artists like Sir Mix-a-Lot, Criminal Nation, uh, NWA, Large Professor, and Main Source, people like that. So the legacy continues with Love of Jay. It's an honor to uphold that legacy and keep hip hop going and, and playing all dimensions of it internationally, nationally. We don't define by coasts and I'm from here and there. You know, it's all part of hip hop. So that's how we rock right here. Now, there's a lot of technical details that you're going to be involved with when you work in media in general. And here you see we have a pre-production board, post-production board, it's just a board. We have a CD audio. Um, this is a room where people can patch into the live on air station and they can be here talking, corresponding, producing the show. So this is another element of what goes on here at Chaos. Beautiful resource. If you know anything, if you're in the Olympia area, Puget Sound area, come visit Chaos. It's a dope institution. 35 years strong. Check it out. There you go. Moving a little closer to me. There you go, thanks. Just hold there for a second, please. I'll do one more color balance in here. Okay. Everything changes. We gotta get that color right, man, because we got colors in here. Yeah. Stay with me for a second. Sure. Okay, thank you. Got it. That looks pretty good. Give me a uh, like a 30 second before you start, Jose, so I can get ready. Okay. You know how to track down Nancy G? No. You should send her a copy of the tape, man. I know. I don't, uh, nobody knows how to get in touch with her. Alright, we're about to go to air. What's your countdown? What's that? Give me your, what's your countdown? 30 seconds? 10 it's seconds? Probably like 15, yeah, something like that. Okay. Oh, shit. Listening to KAOS 89.3 FM Olympia Community Radio. This is the Live from I-5 show. Today is December 14th, 2007. Five days away is my birthday. Yes. Celebrate with me. Send gifts. Feel free to do what you want to do because we're going to have a good time today. I'm celebrating early. Every day is a beautiful day here live from I-5 and we have a dope show for you. You have a guest on the show, special guest calling in from the Bay Area amongst other things. My man Mike P is calling in and we have some new music that we know you're going to love. So keep it locked right here. You can call us at 360-867-5267. Lover J is holding you down. And tune in online, www.chaosradio.org. We're going to get into a classic right now. Three dope artists, MC Search, you know what I'm saying? Pete Nice, called Third Base, man. Know about it right here on Chaos 89.3. Get the gas face. Okay, so what we're doing right now, we're just rocking the old school jam, starting the show. Third base. And I'm going to be getting prepped for the next track, what we're going to do next, okay? So that's what we're doing. Oh, man, well, look. What's up? How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? Chill, chill. Chill. You about to leave for the quarter or what? Uh, I need a little bit. Okay. Today? No, um, okay, so now we're coming to the end of the song. What we're going to do, we have another song queued up on CD. 
This is on vinyl. You don't hear vinyl on many radio stations anymore. But you do hear it right here on Chaos, live from I-5. I mean, this is a staple of our music. Not just a mix show. Main tracks are played on vinyl, so take good care of that vinyl. Okay? So what we're going to do, I'm going to queue up some dilated peoples here. Worst comes to worst. We rock the classics and the new things. So keep your ears open. You know, one of the things that I was able to change about my programming through the years is it used to be just vinyl when I first started, primarily. A little bit of CDs in the, in the 90s and late 80s. Now we have MP3s, which also are a major part. They play a major role in, you know, how I program my show. I have my iPod here. I have like 16,000 songs. It's the 80 gig. I love it. I challenge anyone to compete with my iPod because... It has the movie, but it has like, I have so many classes. Big Daddy Kane, Ice-T's formative albums, um, Andre Nicotina, you know, Mac Dre, all his works. You know, just it's beautiful. I can carry it now in my pocket, where before I would have bags and bags and crates of vinyl. And, you know, uh, when I think of crates of vinyl, I think of uh, Nancy G. And how much of a pioneer she was. She sat right here. But she had other legendary DJs who came all the way from Seattle to be on her show. And they were B Mellow, uh, DJ Supreme. Uh, these are people who are world renowned. DJ B Mellow was West Coast DJ of the year. So, you know, chaos is a real foundation layer for hip hop. And I challenge people out there when you hear or mention the word hip hop to really understand what that means, what hip hop means. Um, you know, the work that Africa Bambada did and creating hip hop and, and being a catalyst for his creation was he made sure that peace, love, unity and having fun were four essential elements of hip hop and there's people like KRS-One um, who continue that legacy and he's just one example, KRS-One is a real mentor to me as well but there's other people besides him, he's just a bigger name that you and I respect as a father of hip hop, you know he's someone who is to be honored in my opinion, and that's how I present myself whenever I see him or meet him or play his music. So, you know, that goes back to me being a breaker, you know, and, and doing graffiti and beatboxing when I was five years old. So, these are people who play roles in my life. Bambada, you know, Houdini, uh, The Furious Four Plus One More, people like that. And my mother, you know, my mother got me involved with music and hip-hop in the first place. She was a pop locker from Watts in Inglewood, Los Angeles, California, and along with my sister, La Fresh, Steli Stell. So we were always involved with hip-hop, and these are the people who we looked to in the early 80s and my mother in the late 70s um, as guides. So, yeah. On the request line, live from I-5, 360-867-5267. We go from L.A. to the Bay. DJ Shadow, Turf Talk, Keek the Sneak. Right here, Chaos 89.3 is live from my 5 with Lover J. Check it. Okay. So what we how do you have to know about? Somebody you have to know about. There's some mandatory artists. You know, whenever their albums come out, I have to get them. Out of respect. Uh, whenever DJ Quick drops an album. Whenever Too Short drops an album. Whenever Ice Cube drops an album. Um, if Rakim ever drops an album, I'm going to have it, you know. So drop an album, Rakim, uh, Dr. Dre. People, it's like paying allegiance to artists who are uh, part of my foundation in hip-hop. So these are just some of the people who are part of my formative years of hip-hop. DJ Shadow's one. He really went wild on this album because Shadow was really unique. He played a lot of ambient music, a lot of um, non-traditional hip-hop, I'd say. You know, he's experimental. And he took it straight to the bay with this album and put, like, Nump, The Federation, Keep the Sneak and Turp Talk on this album, The Outsiders. So this is just an example of what we do rock on Live From My Five. Don't stop. So what we're about to do now, I'm about to go to a PSA, so I'm going to read live, and I'm going to play a promo for my buddy John Ford's show tonight. You know, John's place. It's a jazz show. It's cool. Friday, 6 o'clock. Keep it out.
You're listening to KAOS 89.3 on your FM dial. It's your homeboy, Lover J, in a real way, live from my five. That's Daddy Yankee and Snoop Dogg. We're going to be right back right after this, so keep it locked. Chaos 89.3. The amazing thing. Even the okay, so now we have about 25 seconds left before this promo is done. I'm going to read a public service announcement for uh, the Dispute Resolution Center of Thurston County, a group that I really support and am enthusiastic about. So, you'll be able to hear what I'm going to read in just a minute. Check it out. Chaos 89.3 FM. Check out my man John Ford tonight. John's place is going down to Jazzologist. Man, representing for the city of Olympia, Puget Sound, all around, man. He just is a wonderful resource when it comes to jazz music. So peep him out. I want to let you know the Dispute Resolution Center of Thurston County would like to offer its 40-hour professional mediation training to teach skills usable at home, work, or in volunteering. Classes are held from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. January 29th through February 1st. For more information, the cost and registration, call 360-956-956. 1155 that is a cool organization if you have to just be peaceful you know have a sip of tea and it can start with the dispute resolution center it's going down here live from my five we keep it moving in the mix and i have some new music to present to you today this is some premiere music exclusively for live from my five and it comes from an artist a reggae artist he is from the islands and his name is alex duncan he resides up here in the pacific northwest he's had a he has several musical credits, worked with Jambalasi, college tours, all kind of different ventures. And uh, the name of this track is Ghetto Youth, and you're hearing it right here first on Live From My 5, Chaos 89.3. Give me a call, 360-867-5267, broadcasting live from the west side of the O. Let's get it, let's go, like this. All right. So, okay, the interesting thing about me growing up with hip hop is I was able to see it develop. Um, not from the very beginnings, not from 1973 in the Bronx, and I couldn't help that because I'm not from New York, I'm not from the Bronx, I'm not from 1973, I wasn't born until years after that. But from my perspective, you know, that's still the foundation of hip hop. And it's always important to pay uh, homage to the founders, the Zulu Nation, of which, of which I'm a member, um, Temple of Hip Hop, of which I'm a member, um, and all the artists who made it possible for anybody to like hip hop. If you like 50 Cent, you have to give it up to Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, Melly Mel, people like that, UTFO. So when I was listening to these artists, I bought my first piece of vinyl in 1982. And it was um, the Fat Boys record, and it was a remix record called Let the Music Scratch. These were not popular albums outside of the culture I was in. You know, mostly people of color listen to hip hop, not all, because white people, poor white kids were involved with hip hop too, and certain uh, foundations of it. So it's not a racial thing, but predominantly, like most art forms of music in the United States, it came from people who were poor and people of color, black people. Uh, primarily jazz, blues, uh, rock and roll, you know, the foundations of these lie within the black community. And hip hop came from the culmination of all of these things. And I just grew to learn that over time because I'm interested. You know, electronic music is a, is a cousin to hip hop. It comes from foundations of hip hop. So the stigma of hip hop is that it's a simple, misogynistic, you know, there's so many different adjectives that people use to describe hip hop that it's totally inaccurate and just show the shallowness of thought, you know? You have to put a lot more effort into really researching the foundations of hip hop because even within hip hop, there is a, a pseudo civil war going on where people want hip hop to be one thing, but it's not. Just like a human being, a human being is not just one. It's not just one element to a person. There's many different elements, and if you really give a care about an individual, you know, you'll take the time to understand the different elements that make this person think the way they think, talk the way they talk, act the way they act. Same thing goes with hip hop culture. Okay, so the foundations are with jazz, with Miles Davis and John Coltrane, with blues, with James Brown, you know, with the Delphonics, you know, all these inspirational 
artists who pushed the line during their time. And we received it as hip hop artists and turned it into something different. Also gotta say, uh, let me see. Big shout to my man Alex and big shout to the homegirl tuning in out there. What's up today? What's up, Renee? How's it going? Uh, keep it locked right here. 360-867-5267. This is KS89.3 on your FM dial. Tune in. And this is live from my five listening power radio. So we keep it rocking. We don't stop to the casket drops, man. And I have a track here. We definitely support local artists. So if you are a local artist, you can get at me on air. We can see what we can do to get you some airplay. Expose yourself on air. You know? Uh, this artist here is from Seattle, from the South End, I believe. His name is D Black. He's got a dope album. It's called, let me see. It's on Sporting Life Records, which has been around for a minute. And the name of the album is The Cause and the Effect. So if you get a chance, check it out. We're going to get into a track called This Is Why, right now on Chaos 89.3 FM. Keep it out. This is why. Be black. Love it, Jay. In a real way. We're online as well. So if you don't have the uh, stereo cranking, you can crank the internet at www.chaosradio.org. Check it out. This is why. Be black. Seattle in the house. You ever just have that situation? 89.3 on your FM dial. It's your homeboy in the real way. DJ Lover J broadcasting live from the west side of the old man. Big shots to all my people in the Hawks Prairie, man. East Tango Wilds in the house. And uh, we also have another very special guest in the house. Straight from the Bay Area, Mr. Philmo Freeze from Philmo San Francisco. He's our special guest of the week, and he has a new album coming out. You're gonna wanna know about it. It's called Baker's Dozen. He's been a, a he's a street ball legend, a sportsman, you know. He does his thing in a real way, and he's on tour right now with my homeboy Andre Nicotina. So I want you to welcome to the show OG Mike P from the BAY. Man, what's up, Mike? Love the Jack, love the Jack. What's up, baby? Chilling, chilling. Where you at right now? I'm getting the static from the phone, man. Are you are you are you are you, are you going through tunnels? Well, you know, I'm just right here at the penthouse window pane thinking about this rap game, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, we want to thank you uh, for being a guest on the show. And I know you have a dope new album coming out, Baker's Dozen. I know you're on tour with Andre Nicotina right now. And talk to me a little bit about what's been going on since you entered the rap game. Because I know you were a ball player, man. You started off, you're a real sportsman. You were on the courts of Northern California, making your legend, playing against Gary Payton and whoever else, Rafer, you know, I don't know who all made it to the courts with you, but I know you got your legend out there, so talk a little all bit the, about that. All the Bay Savages, man, I'm from the Bay, I'm a hooper, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying, I'll step on the parquet, but it's about being buttery where we come from, so, you know, I'm, I play hoops, man, I eat, breathe, and sleep the basketball, man, so, you know what I'm saying, like, like the song says, in the game, so. All I want to do is just be in the game and keep playing, you know. And right now, I'm with one of the winningest organizations ever. So, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, if I got to be Wilf Werber, not even Randy Moss, just as long as I'm in the game, that's what counts. And like I said, <laughs> man, concrete jungles of the basketball days is where it's all about, man. No, <laughs> no foul, no harm. You said no foul, no harm. What's wrong with you? Now, you said, uh, you said buttery. Now, when you say buttery, I want you to explain what you mean, because you are from the Bay, and that is one of the capitals of the language. B-40 is definitely an ambassador, but the Bay is known for dropping things like the shizzle, um, all kind of languages that are real popular now, you know, all kind of slang. Talk, what, what do you, when you say buttery, tell the people what you mean. Buttery, buttery is pretty much just like my style, you know what I'm saying, it's smooth, you know what I'm saying, you know, you want, you want your popcorn butter, so you want the full flavor, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, we got the country crack out here, you know how we ghost ride the whip like miracle, it's just, just spread on smooth and come to the bay and you can get sprinkled and test a lot of kind of ways with game and, you know, the bay is just the bay, man, we have our own language, man, and we do our thing, everybody do their thing everywhere, but the bay stands out because it's the bay. It is so versatile. There's so much stuff going on, man. So, you know, we just do our thing and make up words and put them together and shit, they turn out looking like a Webster's Dictionary, you know what I mean? Okay. Okay, now check this out. Now, you, you bring this new album. You have two albums you're working on, and the first one is Baker's Dozen. Right, right. Talk about what that means. What is the Baker's Dozen about? I mean, what, are, what are you bringing to the table in terms of, uh, as an MC? And I know you have a lot of uh, sports analogies that you refer to in your raps. And That's I right. think it's so uh, 
it represents you well because you're a sportsman. So right, right. And I thank you very much for that. You know, I was a four-star athlete, but you know what I'm saying, man. The whole concept of the album is based on the beginnings of where I come from. And like I said, when you're from the Bay, it's about hustle. So the Baker's Dozen is basically about hustle, and you always got to have some coming hot and fresh out that oven that's gonna make you some bread, man. Make you some dough. <laughs> I come from, you got to keep a hot and fresh hustle. Not one, not two, but maybe three or four. So you got to keep some moving at all times. Right. You know what I'm saying? It is, like I said, it's just basically the influences of who I grew up on, like Ice T, Nicotina himself, you know, two short guys from the Bay like that. Two short. I, was, I love women, you know what I'm saying? Two short is the ambassador of that, and like Eric B and Rakim. If you look on when you buy my CD, look on the inside. It's it's, a, it's money in there. It's about being paid in full. You know how Eric B used to rock him and then used to have the money in their hands with the big chains and that yeah, type of thing. Yeah, all the time. I love Ice-T. Ice-T is one of the first rappers that I started listening to. And that's the reason today why I wear my Kango. Because the Kango just says, that's a player with some confidence right there, man. So it comes back to the smooth and buttery part. And a lot of those cats that I just rattled off right there is smooth cats. They do their own thing. And the Bay is just the biggest independent game in the world. So you got to have hustle if you're coming from the Bay. And not only just the Bay, but just in order to make it anywhere in life, you got to have hustle. But from the Bay, you got to hustle twice as hard. Now, what I want to do, because we're going to have a feature on you when your album drops, but what I want to do now is you, you talked about being buttery. Now, we're going to get into one of the, a world premiere of your track, Cold and Beautiful. Now, before we drop it, talk about it, and we want you to stick around because we're going to play another track, and I want you, when we come back, I want you to paint a picture of Fillmore, which has uh, been called uh, the West Coast Harlem, you know, like the black capital of the West Coast, Fillmore, San Francisco, and I know that the, the demographics are changing, the community's changing, and it's being, you know, gentrified. So I want you to talk about what it was like when you grew up, but before that, tell me about Cold and Beautiful, and we're going to get into that track. Man, Cold and Beautiful, basically, is just about beautiful ladies. Beautiful ladies with cold attitude. You know how you can walk up to a chick she can give you the coldest look in the world then you walk around the corner you see the most beautifulest chick in the world they want to give you some action so at the same time i'm just on there talking about how a woman got to be sexy and do her thing and if she gonna invest her time and help a rest cat which most cats need a good woman behind them so they can make shit happen oh language we want we on. yeah make things happen <laughs> you know so we can make stuff happen you always need a good foundation made and like i said being a rap cat you got to be cold and beautiful. You got to have your own image, your own style. You know what I'm saying? You can't be no copycat and your rhymes and your lyrics got to be cold so the fans will want to warm up to them. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm trying to do is just push the envelope, make good music, and hope it's a fine and good home, man. Well, let's, let's, let's give it a home right now on Live from I-5. We're going to drop Cold and Beautiful's world premiere. My man Mike P is in the house. Stick around, Mike. We're going to be right back with you right after we drop the track. For sure. I need dough, flow, and that love with mine. Scroll it up, man. Fire up that issue, playboy. It's about the cold and the beautiful. My feet, rap cat, after the respectable scratch. My story is untold, but the saga is about to unfold. I'm looking for model cinephones with runaway walks that's so cold. I'm at a man, it's Mexican, Colombian, white, Creole, something about Gotta love him. My man Mike P in the house. That's a world premiere of his new track. Cold and beautiful from the new album Baker's Dozen. What's up, Mike P? What you talking about, Baker's Dozen, cousin? Yeah, you know, time fresh out the oven, man. You know, <laughs> just a new song, man, that's been patiently waiting, man. And like I said, I'm with Nicotina, man, and he walked me through the fire deliberately. And you know, I got his stamp of approval, so that's just a lot. Because I'm the one drastic. So, Miss Lake, so this limited edition CD DVD, I don't think no true fan of hip hop should be without it, man. Okay, and it's, it's a, I know it's dope. I, I got a chance to hear some of the tracks. And uh, you are the first artist on Phil Mo Coleman Records, which is Andre Nicotina's label. He usually only put out his own product, but he, now he's right. putting out your album. And so, you know, what does that mean? I know you guys are, you guys go way back. Oh, man, we go way back. But at the same time, you know how it is in the game. Winners train, the losers come. Right. So we got to do all day. All day. Maybe you might have a talented cat and a hard worker, a talented cat don't want to work hard sometimes, so you might have to roll with the hard worker who can become talented. You know what I'm saying? So 
that he was willing to let me put on my construction hat and do my thing and just bang out the beats and get my tool belt and my hammer and my nails and put it together. And, 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 and just laugh, you know, as we sat at the round table and went over it. And man, the guy that kind said, man, if you wasn't my best friend, like Mike, I would stamp it anyway. So like I said, it means a lot to be coming out of that green room having the commissioner announce that you're the number one draft pick yes. for a winning, a winning label. That's so great. Put, put your hat on, baby. Put your hat on. What more can I ask for? And it's a Pete <laughs> hat on top of that. <laughs> Mike P, tell me, now tell me this. Our listeners are very curious about the area you come from. You're from San Francisco, the city by the bay. And it is um, the, the neighborhood you're from, the, the, the city within the city, it's right. Fillmore. Fillmore right. is what people call it, but Fillmore is what it's really called. So talk about right. Fillmore, right. the West Coast Harlem, the, the black capital of the West Coast. And what did that mean to you growing up? What were some of the things that influenced you, some of the things you saw? I know there's many elements in that area, in that neighborhood. Man, there's a whole lot of elements going on in the Frisco Fillmore, man. That's the Western edition Fillmore locality, And you know what I'm saying? It's the heart of the jazz intro from back in the day in film school. So, you know, this, we got a lot of stuff going on there. I'm just from the same tour where a lot of greats are from, man, like Filmo Slim, you know what I'm saying? One of the world's greatest gentlemen of leisure, you know what I'm saying? And I got guys like Nicotina that's from Filmo, San Quinn, Messi Moore, JT, the bigger figure. So I'm just blessed to be in the same breath with some of those cats. As a rapper, I didn't do my thing. And like I said, in Filmo, if you run into... Ten people, you better be the tenth hustler because the first nine of them is going to be nine hustlers. And if you ain't a hustler, you can't run with nine other hustlers if you a square. And it ain't being a hustler. I got a song called Kind Artist that's on the album. Okay. Well, you can be a hustler that keep your hands clean and you can be a kind artist that keep your hands clean. So, like I said, you know, being from Philmon, Philmon, man, is a beautiful honor. It's a great place. There's a lot of different variety over there, a lot of substance. But the main thing, you got to have something hot and fresh coming out that oven that's going to make you some dough or some bread. And that's the credo of Philmon. Man, that's the credo. Like, like Queenie said, man, the hustle continues. The hustle continues. Now talk about, you know, when people hear the word hustler, they think of like, you know, dirty car salesmen, you know, just, you know, illegal business. What is the, talk about the the fabric of a real hustler. Because we grew up, in my house, we grew up as hustlers and we hustle on the football field, basketball court, and the studio. We, you know, it's just about producing results is, you know, how we define it. Well, what are some of the elements? How do you define it? Well, pretty much. I'm saying I I agree to agree with you, Lover J. Any time of the day, man. You pretty much summed it up. You know what I'm saying? Where I come from, Filmo Cali, you gotta grind for your shine. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna get dealt the perfect hand. Either you gonna know when to hold them or you gonna fold them. You know what I'm saying? And where <laughs> we come from, you don't fold them. You know what I'm saying? You just keep you keep it moving and keep it going. You gotta grind for the shine. And if you're scared to put on your construction hat and go to work, then if you don't wanna work, you ain't gonna eat. But you got to get out there and do your thing. And like I said in the previous sentence, you don't have to be a dirty person, a, a, a hustler that's a shady car dealer. He's known as shady. He's just not a good business person. He's right. a bad entrepreneur. Right. Hustler is somebody that can turn something from nothing. If you can take nothing and turn it into something, if you leave the house and only got $1, and then you come back in the house and you got $101, <laughs> and you can feel hurt or brought no violence, nobody right you are in business like this where like i said filmo taught me this you gotta learn how to do business the art of business is taking money out of someone's pocket without exhorting to violence right. that's a businessman that's all business woman so we just want to be a good citizen and a good entrepreneur like i said i come from a, a place where I man nine out of ten people go to jail you know what I'm saying? And like I said, dealing with me and Nikki is 9 out of 11, and me and him the only ones <laughs> looking at the other head. You know what I'm saying? Ain't behind no iron gates, but the cats that been behind iron gates yeah. just had situations, and everybody out here in the world got a situation, and they got to handle it in their own way. Yeah. Some resort to violence, some don't, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I'm just trying to keep it moving and stay out of other people's way, so I can do what I need to be doing, you know what I'm saying? And just keep it moving and 
be a good person in the world, you know what I'm saying, continue to go around the world and be on my grind for the shine with Andre Nicotina? Are you serious? Most cats dream about opening up to him. I'm sitting on the stage with him. Making it happen, so it's a blessing, man. The rap game are definitely looking down on me, and like I said, I'm gonna keep my surfboard in the water, man, and ride the wave, and just keep making good music and let it find a good home, like rock, blues, and hip hop, man. That's for everybody on I5, man. Your your boy, who is my boy, love it. Greg Parker from New Sound Productions made that beat for yeah. That whole song right there is for the great Northwest. Anybody who touched I5, when you touch I5, man, rock, blues, and hip hop, it please, because. No, it's, that it's hard to create down here when you got a lot of distractions. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of great cats down in the field mode and within this great Bay Area create a lot of good sounds and music for a lot of good fans out there. Like I said, the fans is just, man, they love the Bay and they loyal to the Bay. And man, yeah. definitely appreciate that, man, there, because there is a loyal fan. And, and that's true. The Bay does have some of the most loyal hip-hop fans because one thing, you know, for the listeners to know, the Bay Area is unique in that uh, artists can drop an album in the bay and not have to rely on anybody outside of that region buying the album. They can survive off of the cities of San Leandro, San Francisco, Oakland, Richmond. The, the, the fans, the listeners will buy enough albums for you to eat for a year uh, in the bay, and that's dope. I think that's just a real monumental example of supporting artists. And you know, and I know, speaking of loyal fans, you're gonna have. You have a show up here in Seattle at Numo's on the 27th, so I know people will have a chance to check you and Andre out up there in Seattle uh, on December 27th at Numo. Everybody, come on down, please. I'm I'm open arms for everybody, man. It's a welcome man at my door. Mike P, a.k.a. Mike, Mike want to know everybody in Washington, man. Either you a cougar or you a husky, man. Come nah, talk nah, to well, me. Well, hold up, man. This show is sponsored by the Cougs, man. We don't deal with the dogs uh, on Life Mark 5. I'm a cool girl. My dogs just show up at the show, man, right now. <laughs> got a roll with that WSU the other night. Yeah, roll with the Wazoo, man. Yeah, roll with the Wazoo, man. Wazoo, okay? We're from the Wazoo's because, like, with me and Nikki Chunk, and we go back and forth over that apple cup, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I definitely want to see some apple bottoms down there on the 27th. <laughs> Too cold and beautiful and some booty stars, you know. Come on down and chill with us and have a good time and watch Mike T, the God of Con, and Smoothie. Good Put on the cousins. Check it out. Chaos 89.3 in the game with Mike P. Hold the line, Mike. Can you feel me? Can you feel me? Hey, can you feel me? It's in the game. Can you feel me? It's in the game. About to go back to back like a devil hit him. I know you watch your player take the field. I'm swinging choppers and taking grounders. Keep on my nails still manicured like a baseball diamond. So my first base as a little bigger. Cause I crack nothing but homers touching bases like the first major leaguer. Man, I'm just holding, keep the pieces together. Oh, the energy. It's still going. Roll tape. Oh, okay. Oh, still going? Okay. So that was Mike T. Uh, he's an independent artist, somebody I know who's done a lot of work in uh, hip hop, and you know, and most of his work has been done in basketball and just being an average man and just earning a living. And uh, he has a neat style in rapping, one that uh, I think is totally unique. So he's definitely give it some airplay and give his perspective a, a listen. Well, Jose and I go a little ways back to back when uh, I was student staff, actually, and uh, he was a programmer doing one of the late night shows. And uh, at that time, I was serving as news director and a position I still hold volunteer jazz director. And that's one of our areas of commonality. Uh, our shows follow each other at this point in time, although it's just as well because I could never fill in. Were I to do the show that he does right now, you'd find out very quickly I am just a middle aged old white guy. Um, but we do. We talk about Coltrane and what have you, and uh, we understand the, the connectivity of it all. It's a pleasure working with Jose because he understands our primary focus here at Chaos being service. Um, I can go in with him at the last minute. Here's a last minute public service announcement. We've got to get it out there. Takes a script, rolls with it. It's really good that way. Um, not all volunteers understand the, the primary purpose of service of a station like this. And that's not to say they're either, you know, by a volunteer or a bad person. It's just different mindset. 
but Jose grasps this. Uh, the fact that Jose was doing stuff here at age 12, which is certainly before my uh, tenure at Chaos, it is unique. It to not solely. I mean, we did have had uh, Ian Brinker, a.k.a. Schmedley, on Hell Olympia. And I myself, during my ten early 10 years of student at Chaos, had uh, Peter Belfoy Rice, a news intern at age 11. But it is a rarity. It's something that can only happen at a station like Chaos um, that is open to the community as a whole. We want to make sure you've got the chops. We're not going to turn you out there without training or what have you, but we're open to the idea, and we get to have some fun along the way. Considering what we pay our volunteers, we better have a lot of fun. As I said, Jose and I do two vastly different shows and with different genres, although at the end of it, we're both doing radio. I think that's really important to remember. We both have our, all our obligations to the listeners. Uh, to be an engaging host to bring them information they need and entertain them. It's funny because, uh, you know, it's now said, you know, hip-hop is a new music, even though it's got at least 10 years, if not 20, on it at this point. Some of the most successful commercial bits of business with hip-hop, though, have been from samples. of. I'm not used to sampling yet. It's sort of like, make your own music. I, that's where I've become a really an old-school grump. That's actually my, my pseudo-nickname here, DJ Grumpy Old Man. And... Um, it is. They're taking uh, tracks by Ken Nordine, Miles Davis, Coltrane, Billy Holiday, and the like, and mixing them up. I can only hope, and I do as a rule, that the person will want to know the source material and want to go back to the roots of it all, like Jose has done, as I say. Get him talking about Coltrane, he'll be going on for hours where it takes him. And, of course, that's what I love about jazz. It's never the same once anyhow. It takes us all on its own trips. If you're lucky, it's a nice round trip ticket. Yes. As of January, we're 35 years old as a station. I've been here for 14 of them, and it still feels kind of strange. Um, I think, again, a commonality Jose and I share is that we hang on to this place because we found a place where we were able to be ourselves and then find our place within the organization. I must confess, I'm curious. Everything is changing. Uh, we're not getting as much of these as we used to. We're now getting or wanting to send us digital downloads. They think we're all going to use this computer to run them all off MP3. I'm not sure how long it'll take us to get to that point. Also, stations are going to all digital hardware, digital radio, which actually lets you multi-stream. I mean, it's conceivable in the future, near future, there could be a Chaos 1, 2, 3, and 4, all coming out of the same frequencies through these new HD radios. I'm just wondering how we're going to manage the transition, not, not from a negative standpoint, but I just want to see what it looks like, what we're going to sound like, what will that afford us the opportunity to do to serve the community better and bring them more music. And I know it's something Jose and I talk about, you know, where do we fit in, because we've been around a while, even at our youthful ages, where do we fit in? Okay. A hallmark of chaos throughout the majority of our history is our policy favoring independent artists and labels over commercial. At this point in time, uh, roughly five larger conglomerates own the bulk of the what we call major label or commercial music. And uh, Chaos still tries to maintain a policy that throughout the broadcast week, 80% of what we play comes from indies. This makes us even unique amongst community radio stations. And it's not always easy. Um, in a genre like hip-hop, probably more so because it's a lot more DIY, do-it-yourself. I know sometimes as a jazz host, uh, I am relying on the big guys for some stuff, but again, they've got the vaults of the classics, too. So you make the most of uh, what's out there. Try to find, again, what's under, if you've got to play something from a big label, fine. Find a track that didn't get any love. It's, you know, most albums are more than one track. And you get, I'm at home, I've heard of this guy, but have I heard this track? And so it is with any show. You try to find something that's not what the other guy is doing. Bring a little more to your listener. Give them a reason to stay with you. We've come a long way from these lovely plastic discs with grooves in them. The words haven't left us. We still talk about being in the groove or out of the groove. And it has. The dynamics changed a lot. I talked earlier about digital downloads and... Even the way their marketing is changing now, I mean, with Radiohead saying we're going to sell them all singles, the music industry is agog. Because the music industry itself, the, the business end, didn't change. They're still, <laughs> they're still screwing artists out of their money. 
and trying to blame it on radio. I mean, there's a move afoot right now to have terrestrial radio, you know, turn on your radio and get music, pay performance royalties to artists. Because, and the, I'm quoting someone, they get to play our music for free. Now, we always thought it was we got to promote your music for free. Uh, the advent of the iPod, the MP3 player, the digital download, um, has changed things dramatically. For the most part, for the artists, it has made it a good thing. You can get your stuff out to more people faster, much faster. You can go directly to the listener. That's what's got the industry upset. They can be bypassed. They're like yesterday's news. We try to hold our own in the middle of it because as a small station, we might not have as much technology to do all the fancy stuff as, as large, oh, say a clear channel station. So we're looking to act what we can out of existing technology, try to grow into what's next and be ready for what comes after that. Now, the rotten part of all this is it's entirely possible the radio could become obsolete or inconsequential, irrelevant. With on-demand delivery through various media, and the question is, are we ready for that? And I don't have an answer for you yet, but I'm looking. I, I think an important note to mention, if you'll pull that monitor down, is that if you like simpler mediums like radio, whether it's chaos or not, you better show them the love and show them support. Let them know if they're looking for dough, throw them a few nickels. We're only here as long as we have support. People like Jose and myself, what we do on the air is only as good as our listeners let us be. It's the simplest way to put it. So, yeah, that was a plug, and I have no shame about it because I'm not ashamed of what we do. We, we earn it every day. When we're in here on whatever our shift, we earn it, we work for it, and we, uh, we deserve it. And that's why we do what we do, because we believe it. You were tuned in to the voice of the Puget Sound. Love a J live from I-5. Chaos 89.3 FM, man. We bring it to you live in the real way. That's the Jack of Pittsburgh, California. Another Bay Area artist we rocking today. We're going to take it from the Bay all the way to Hollis, Queens. Let's get into it with Run DMC from the King of Rock album. Can you rock it like this? That's a question. So give me the answer at 360-867-5267. Your homeboy in the real way. Love a J all day, any day. Live for my five. Check it out. Okay. And this is a dope track right here. I got to rock the Run DMC. So, um, you know, we just had a guest on the radio show this week like we usually do. And our guest today was Mike P from the Bay Area, from Fillmore. He's an independent artist, somebody you may or may not be familiar with because he's beginning a career in music, um, an official career. And we talked about the subject of hustlers. Because you get a lot of, what, what I experience is a lot of misnomers. Like people will call um, guys players. And they'll call, you know, people hustlers, and they have negative connotations. And that's not always accurate. You know, when Mike P and I were talking, I grew up as a hustler, and that was ingrained in me by my mother. She's a single mother, raising two uh, special children, like all children are special. Just depends on the parents want to let them know how special they are. So we knew we had to hustle. The average result was not adequate for us. The good result was not adequate for us unless the result was based on excellent effort. And that's what a hustler provides, is excellent effort in, in order to gain positive results, to get a result, not to have an ongoing, I could have, would have, should have, why didn't I do this? Oh, man, no, no complaining. Uh, winners train, losers complain. That is the slogan. That's my hustler's slogan. So, you know, hustler, Mike P on the radio show talked about, um, being able to create and produce without ha causing harm to others. And, and I, I go with that definition, you know. It's not about using or abusing others in order to gain anything. So that's the hustler's uh, creed that I come from. Um, and that has to do with everything from being on the radio here at Chaos since I was young, or at least being at the station since I was young, and being a writer, and being an educator, and encouraging others to be motivated in the same way, or at least be motivated, maybe not the same exact way, 
because uh, sports and athletics ingrained in me competitiveness in the classroom and on the field. So that's part of being a hustler as well. All right. Well, when we talk about hip hop culture, you know, I'm an ambassador for hip hop culture, but hip hop is just a part of life. And one of the fundamental principles of life, you know, that I live by is uh, being a peacemaker and being part of nonviolent causes and nonviolent movements. Finding, basically, there is a time and place for, I believe, conflict, and it can be physical. But that's a, a final resort. That is the last resort, and that's what I believe. I believe all other options should be exercised before that comes to a head, because you know, and just an example of that is, um, this is me personally, because I believe in Gandhi, Martin Luther King's philosophies. Um, but one thing is um, I don't believe in allowing myself to be brutalized or allowing other people to be brutalized as they just sit there and allow other human beings to impart uh, violence upon each other. So before we get to even that point, though, uh, men have a very important role in nonviolence. Um, I worked with the um, Sexual Assault Education uh, Network when I was in college. And what we encouraged men to do is look at their role in violence, you know, in domestic violence against women, in sexual assault against women. And that's something that needs to be uh, mentioned whenever we talk about hip hop because artists, hip hop artists, do not promote rape. Uh, I haven't heard anybody who at least anybody I play on my show who's going to be uh, encouraging, you know, taking anything from a woman. And the importance of men acknowledging their role in that is that the majority of sexual assaults are committed by men. It's a man's problem more so than my philosophy and, and the shared philosophy of others, some, some others, is that rape and sexual assault is a man's problem more so than a woman. Uh, most times females are that the violence is inflicted upon them. And not to say that there's not sexual assaults committed by women, but just the majority in number are committed by males. And this is part of what some people call a rape culture. So we take a stance as men and say, you know, acknowledge your role. You know, acknowledge your, your um, inabilities to communicate and improve upon that. You know, acknowledge how you would feel if your mother or sister or daughter or any woman that you know or don't know were subject to an unwanted assault or unwanted uh, aggression from a man or woman, anybody. So in terms of nonviolence, you know, that's something that Africa Bambada teaches in hip hop. We talk about peace, love, unity, and having fun. And uh, women are essential to hip hop culture as well as life, period. So I believe personally as the condition of our women go, you can gauge the condition of your society. So if people want to say, you know, if people want to um, claim that, you know, women, you know, blame women for societal problems, you know, okay. These are the mothers, these are the daughters, you know, these are the people who hold life within their body the reproduction of life. So think about what that means, you know? And you can come to whatever conclusion you want, but I know what I think. And I think, uh, you know, females are sacred to life, as men are. But acknowledging roles, acknowledging, acknowledging actions, historical actions, image, you know, how people see themselves, you know? I think it's important. AOS 89.3 on your FM dial. That is the brother. His name is Chaos, K-OS, not like Chaos, our station here. And he's representing Canada, our brothers up north. Now, this is a track right here. I got to get into this track here because we world premiered it on Chaos, and now you've seen it on videos, and this will probably be one of the last times I play it. But it is Calvin Broadus, Snoop Dogg, Long Beach in the house, and his new track, the video's dope, and here's why. He, like, pays homage to Rick James and... Um, Curtis Mayfield and uh, Prince. So we'll give it to you. It's called Sensual Seduction right here on Chaos 89.3. Love a J in the house. 360-867-5267. Hit us on the request line. 4.40 in the p.m. Friday, live from I-5. Check it. Okay. 
So we're here at K. I still this is a beautiful program that I host here. And the reason I got involved with hosting radio and just learning about media is that media is one of the few channels we have left to disseminate messages and education. Um, over the last, since 1996, more than a decade, uh, media airwaves have become more and more consolidated by commercial entities which don't necessarily have the public's best interest in mind. Okay, Chaos is a community radio station that's owned by the community and all airwaves, television and radio, all airwaves are owned by you. First thing you should know before you complain about Fox or NBC or any station in particular, you own these airwaves and it's up to you to demand your ownership be, uh, be brought to some fruition that you get a say in what's on your airwaves. So that's up to you. Before you get upset with any executives or employees at any of these companies, you have a say as well. And my say is exemplified through my show here at Chaos. The importance of Chaos and Live From I-5 is I produce a show. We disseminate knowledge. We're able to talk about sexual assault. We're able to talk about gentrification. We're able to talk about issues of racism corruption in sports, um, holidays, you know, anything. Everything doesn't have to be depressing and political. So these are the airwaves that are owned by us, as the FCC has, has laid out in their edict, you know. Uh, so basically via independent media, you're able to create your own message responsibly and disseminate it. And this is an excellent medium, I think, to discuss with young people uh, about their role, their importance, and get them involved. So they become more and more educated, more and more comfortable, more and more fluent with media practices, and more and more, it becomes more and more of a normal process where it's not like they're on the radio and I'm not. It's, it's, you know, us versus them, there's not a divide. You know, this media is very important because you look at the messages that are going on now, there's a way to counter them. All right. Well, I want to thank you for joining me um, during this experience here on the Live from I-5 show with Lover J. My name is Jose Gutierrez, Jr. Um, I have to give thanks to, you know, people who are influential in my life, like my mother and my sister and Free Your Mind and the AHB Network. And this is just a sample of what's possible if you put forth your best effort. Uh, you know, my radio show's been, it started here at Chaos. I went to different stations across the United States, up into Canada internationally on satellite, and I continue to set goals and pursue them. And that's something you can do. It's something that you can do regardless of your age. You're never too old. As long as you're still alive, you still have room to grow. People say, old oh, dog, can't learn new tricks, or that's if the old dog's lazy or tired or doesn't feel like learning new tricks. So I feel like as long as you're still breathing, you have an opportunity to impact your life and others. And it depends on how you want to do it. And I choose to do it in a positive way and hopefully uplift others around me and motivate others around me. So that's part of everything I do, from education to communication to public service to uh, hip-hop culture. And, you know, I hope that when you watching this video, you're inspired to listen to Chaos Radio or do something constructive with yourself and note that as long as you're here, alive and breathing, you have an opportunity to impact change in your life and in our community. So that's my goal. That's why I'm here. So thank you for joining me. Love a J Live from I-5. Peace and love and um, you know, enjoy your day. Winners train, losers complain. Check you out. Okay. So I appreciate you joining me today and, and enjoying your experience here at Chaos. If you're looking for someone to speak with students about hip-hop or about sexual assault education or about life skills and coaching, mentoring, you know, feel free to give me a call or email me. My name is Jose Gutierrez, Jr. I'm a son of Olympia, and I'm uh, glad you could join me today.